illustrations by Pete. So I have to admit, I'm fanboying pretty hard over Derwent. I just love their stuff. Here's the thing, they listen to their customers. They really do. When Colorsoft first came out, there was a lot of people saying, you know, these pencils, they're good, they're thick, they cover well, a lot of pigment, but they don't blend well. They're, they're just too much. They don't, the, a lot of people like to use odorless mineral spirits. They don't blend well. So they came out with Pro Color. The Pro Color blend well with odorless mineral spirits, but a lot of them are not light fast. And people complained about that. So they made the Light Fast brand. Light Fast is beautiful. They're wonderful pencils. They're a little expensive because of the amount of pigment that they have to put in it. They're light fast pencils. Then you have illustrators. Illustrators just said, you know, we want something a little bit brighter, something that pops a little bit more. They don't have to be light fast. Just make them what, it, so they made the high chroma set. Just whenever their customers suggest something or request something, they do it. It's, it's unlike any other company, and that's why I'm such a fan of them. No matter what they come out with, I'll probably buy something from them. They're my favorite company to buy from as far as art products. If they could nail the paper, we'd be in business. So in this video, I'm gonna use a little bit more color. I'm gonna use some more of that pop that Derwent is known for, especially with the ink tense line. What happened with that line was, people said, we like watercolor pencils, we enjoy them. The problem is with watercolor pencils is, after you put, add water to them and water them down, they kind of dilute, they get a little pale. Uh, I know that Faber-Castell makes great watercolor pencils, not a problem, but with the Derwent Ink Tense line, you add water and they get better, they get brighter, they pop more. And so that's what I'm gonna use for this video. Okay, so we're gonna get back to the studio and I'll show you how that works. All right, so my goal for this one was to add a little bit more color, a little bit more pop. I'm just doing an abstract piece. This isn't anything in particular. And then I went back, instead of adding the ink that I usually add to add all the details, I just used a darker color and added details that way. And in the end, I really like how it came out. These are very vibrant. They're very bright colors. I know I didn't do that in the last video, but they, they are, they're just beautiful colors. They're deep and rich. And you can water them down a little bit and get a little bit of a lighter patch, but really the color is designed to be bright. And that is one thing I love about this. I do like to have more muted colors when I do things, but if I want something bright to pop, these are ideal. They're just great. I know that it, people compare this to watercolor. It's not the same thing. With watercolor, you're trying to do something very specific. Watercolor, you can work. You can manipulate a little bit better. You can do some things that are uh, just a little bit different. It's different techniques. Some of them are the same, but for the most part, it's different techniques. This is more of a layering process. And you have to think before you layer because once you put that layer down, it's there. It's stuck. Now, you can go over it with the white block and then redo, rework some parts and go over it. You can actually do that almost like you would with a gouache. But again, it's gonna be permanent color that's down there. It's it's not a temporary thing. You can't re-wet once it's dried, re-wet and lift. You're not gonna be doing that. But if you keep it wet, you can manipulate it pretty good. But once it's dry, that's it. So it is really good though for uh, quick sketching and just getting something down fast and uh, just exploring some different things and shapes and textures and colors those kinds of things But I really enjoy these and uh, and I think you will too if you try them You know because I know you so well, but we go way back, right? You remember mrs. Grossman's class? Yeah Since then so usually when I talk you hear me on the client side on the art appreciators side of things and, uh, you know, I'm very often telling artists to get over it and just, you know, these are your people that you're trying to build an audience and build a community and that kind of stuff. Today, just to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to take the artist side on, on an issue that I think is very, actually, I think it's important because all of us experience it. And 
I think the way we react to it is actually the most important part. But, you know, being an artist, a lot of people do not appreciate the time or the effort or energy that it takes to create something. And they almost ask you um, or expect you rather to do things sometimes for free or, you know, you're going to be drawing and painting anyway. I'm just giving you something to draw and paint and then I would like it in return for free. So I understand that is a big frustration for artists because people do not appreciate an artist the way they do any other. If you walked in and said, guess what, I'm a lawyer. They wouldn't say, oh, great, I'm, I would like to uh, utilize your services for free and help me handle this situation and don't charge me anything because you're going to be in court anyway. I mean, you're going to be litigating a case or defending someone. You're going to do it anyway. So just do this for me for free. I'm giving you something to do. It, and that's how sometimes people treat art. I get it. That's a problem. That's something that's frustrating and can sometimes lead to a burst of emotion and, and just lashing out at someone. And I just want to encourage you not to do that. Just take your time to educate someone and say, look, you know, this is, yes, it's something I love to do, but it's still something I have to work very hard at. It takes up a lot of my time and it's something that takes a lot of my energy. It, it's actually, in many cases, the mental uh, I guess the, the mental work that you put into a piece, even when you're doing something like this, just doodling and doing something abstract, sometimes the mental effort is exhausting. It's, it's tiring. And so you feel depleted. You feel like that part of your energy is drained. And when you create something, you're doing it because of the love of doing it, but that doesn't mean you don't want to be compensated for it. I'm sure there are plenty of doctors who love saving lives, but they, they still like to be compensated for that. They still have to live. They still have to buy those art supplies. They don't buy art supplies. You buy art. If they're buying art supplies, that's a different kind of surgery. And uh, I wouldn't recommend you go see that person if you need anything done seriously. But they still have to... Um, you know, they have to pay for their schooling that they went through and they have to pay for their mortgage on their house and their cars and their, their families. They have to buy food just like everybody else. It's just a profession. And it, it may be a noble profession, depending on how you look at it. Some people don't like doctors, whatever the case is. Maybe that's a bad example, but I, I just want to say... As an artist, I, I sometimes feel underappreciated. I feel as if people are like, oh, well, there's something that came up that has to do with art. So I figured I would let you do it. And, you know, you'll get the recognition of doing it. And you can just do this for nothing. And I get it. I understand. Just just have a little bit of patience with people. It's, it's something that's so outside of their understanding. It's an industry that even most artists are not familiar with. So just be a little bit, show some patience, social, social restraint. I understand you're getting this all the time from people, but you know, you have to explain it. And each and every time, sometimes it gets tiring, but, and I get it, but just take, take the time to do it. Let them know, look, whatever you do for a living, no one's asking you to do that for, for what if your boss said, Hey, uh, yeah, still come into work on Monday, but we're not going to pay you for that. It, we, you're going to work anyway. So we just I'm just giving you something to do. The, it's the same exact thing. And if you explain it that way, maybe they can get it. Most people don't appreciate it, especially if they are your friends and family. There's something about that. And it, even people who are very successful in any profession do not get the admiration of their family. Usually they look at it. Yeah, but I know you. You just... Remember that time you ate that worm on the dare? Remember that time you lost that bet and you had to chug the... It doesn't matter. The, the point is, they look at you from that perspective. They have so much history with you that they remember those things, not your professional thing. It's hard for people to grasp. I always try and look at people in that light. I try and look at what, what are they doing, especially people in my family, because you don't want to take them for granted you want to appreciate them probably more than anybody 
the people that you love, the people that are in your family, and you want to you want to appreciate them for who they are and for the impact that they have on other people's lives. And that's really cool. It's a great thing. Someone's a teacher or a nurse or whatever they do. Um, whatever they do is important. They're, they're being paid for it. It's, it's probably a little bit important. may not be as important as something else, but it's important, whatever they're doing. So you want to be appreciated for also being important. And that's all you're really asking them to do. And that's understandable. And in all fairness, um, you know, not to get down on anybody, but if you don't treat this like it's something that's very important, nobody else will either. So if you just treat it as, oh, I'm just a hobby person, you know, I get some free time, I just do some doodles and draw whatever, and you don't take it seriously, or at least you're not, um, you're not portraying that you're taking it seriously, don't expect anybody else to. Um, th there's, there's that idea behind it that you can sit down and say, look, this is something that I'm doing or trying to start a career or trying to do professionally or just something, even if you're not, even if it's just something that you do for fun and it's your hobby. You know, this is something that you take very seriously and it's fun, but that doesn't make it any less work. Okay, I know a lot of people have that saying that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That I don't believe that's entirely true. You work. This is work. This is effort. When when I come up here to record a video, it's effort. It's something that's taking a lot of concentration to do. I got to make sure I'm doing things the right way and make sure I'm getting things that I want to get and saying things that I want to say and not just wasting your time and mine. So you have to treat it as seriously as, as you want other people to treat it at least. Okay, just keep that in mind. And then talk to them about it. And if they love you, if they're a friend, relative that actually loves you, they'll understand what you're saying. This is not very hard to comprehend. But just be a little patient and explain it. All right, well, I think that's about it for today. I'm going to go. And um, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Subscribe.